Hi everyone, I'm Bonnie from Really Reasonable Ribbon and Make Time to Craft. And this is my friend Daisy who is modeling a pretty little Christmas themed bow in her top knot for us. Today I'm back with my bow at all 3.0 and I'm going to teach you how to make quick and easy doggy hair bows with the rubber band incorporated right into the bow as it's tied. Here are some more samples of cute little dog bows and these were made using the October Ribbon Club assortment from Really Reasonable Ribbon. These monthly color or holiday themed assortments are a great way to build your ribbon stash and try new ribbons. Gift subscriptions are also available. So today I'm going to be creating a couple of holiday themed doggy bows. And we're going to first work with the 5 8 inch bold red check plaid ribbon. I have my pegs on the bow all set. The front row I have it in six and a half and eight and in on the back row I also have six and a half and eight where the pegs are. The back row will be the helping hands that will hold the rubber band. In no way am I a dog bow making expert and this is just some of the bands that I picked up at a local store wasn't really sure what I wanted. After working with it a bit, the multicolor ones are not a great idea. My original thought was match the band to the ribbon color, but I think you're far better off either going with clear or having a light and dark option and matching the rubber band to the dog's hair color, either light or dark. I wasn't able to find, um, a light in the smaller rubber band so we're going to use the black ones today which work good for Daisy because her hair is dark. So I'm going to do a double band. I'm slipping two onto the back two pegs and the pegs will hold that while we do the bow. Um, when I was trolling for ideas I saw a lot of them use double bands which I'm not even really sure why but my initial thought was if one breaks you still have another one and can use the bow. Maybe there's a different reason. I just figured I'd do two, can't hurt. So we're just gonna do a simple double loop bow. And I'm gonna start behind the front row pegs. And I'm just gonna wrap in a figure eight pattern until there are two loops on each side. And then we're gonna continue the bow just like I always do. Because there's just a small amount of room in between these pegs, I'm gonna pull the tails to the back just to give me more room because I like to fold the edges in to make a narrower center and there's just not enough room unless I move to the back. So I'm going to cross over. We're going to bring that around the front and down and out the bottom. And at this point I'm going to send the ribbon up through the center of the bands in the back. So I think you can see it's up through the center of that double band. And now we're just going to continue with the locking C-knot. And we're going to come back in between. So we're working right behind the bow again. And I'm going to gently tighten. And now I'm going to just make my adjustments to make that bow look as neat with the center pleats as I can. Um, this is where if you have, I like to have a pair of tweezers close by because that does make it easier to grab in there and make the adjustments that I want to make. But it's not necessary. You can use your fingers as well. And it's just as soon as you're happy, just start the back and forth rocking motion to tighten that center knot down as tight as you can get it. And when you're satisfied with that, just pull the rubber band off the back pegs and then slide your ribbon up and off. Make your adjustments. And then you're just going to clip 
the tails however you like them clipped and do be sure and take that extra few seconds and seal the ribbon ends because you don't want them to fray and they will get brushed up against and you know when it, somebody's wearing it it's going to get a little more wear and tear than if it's on a card or a paper craft product okay and at this point i would definitely take the extra time and add a little glue to hold the tail in place I actually do this on all my bows to keep it looking exactly the way I want it, but especially for a dog bow because they're going to brush up against things and things are going to rub against it this way. It'll keep it exactly where it belongs. And you could either, you know, I don't always use hot glue, hot glue, and I don't really get along very well. But for speed's sake today, and if you like hot glue, it is the fastest way to get the job done. I would also go ahead and add a little bit of glue to that knot. Locking seam knots are really secure, but you're going to be pulling on that rubber band. So it's going to give it a little more stress than it would normally get. And just, I don't know if you've done this, but if you dip your finger in cold water, you can actually go ahead and press on that really quickly without burning your finger, just to get it down in there and dry it up faster. And there you have it. And these are really sturdy now. They're, you're going to have to work really hard to loosen up the bow at this point. So there it is. And most of the bows that I saw when doing my research, the band went in this direction, which works for top knots, ears. As a matter of fact, I can't really think of anything that you wouldn't want it that way for, other than possibly if you wanted to slip it onto a collar rather than attach it directly to the dog. So I do have these bands that I found that are just a little bit longer and they're clear so I don't know how well that's going to show up but it's a little bit bigger of a rubber band. So you can move your helping hand pegs to the middle row at six and eight and a half and add that bigger bow or bigger band sorry to the back helping hands and now I'm using a piece of Christmas traditions plaid and we will do pretty much the same bow um, two loops on each side fold the center in cross over down through the bottom and out the back this time rather than going through this band we're just going to go around it or the whole rubber band is going to be in the knot so tire locking C knot gently tighten I'll quickly make some adjustments just to make that the pleats in the center of the bow look a little nicer with the look just gently rock back and forth to tighten it it never cooperates quite as well when you're filming anyway we'll call that done we can release the band ends and up and off with the bow doesn't look too bad and here are the ends of the band I would trim my tails again 
and heat seal them, although I won't do that, just to make it a little quicker. Um, glue the tails like we did last time. And then the easiest thing to do with this is just thread something through when you're gluing, just so the ends stay up where you're going to want them to be. Then I would throw some, you know, glue in around the knot, same as I did with the other bow. And when you're done, you'll end up with a bow with the loops standing straight up so they could easily, you could thread it around the dog's collar and it could be, you know, just on, like you could even do no tails and make it like a bow tie a little bigger and make a bow tie for a little boy dog. And that's it. On some of the bows I added, I have an embellishment in the center of that one and a little mulberry flower. Really a reasonable ribbon has an entire line of embellishments and mulberry flowers that could be used for the centers of the bow. I would just caution you to be sure you know your dog's behavior before if there's any chance it's going to come off and get chewed up. I would avoid the embellishments. You don't want to do anything that would cause a choking problem for the dog. So there you have the dog bows. Thanks so much for joining me and learning how to create these fun bows for your doggy. If you like the video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up below and subscribe to my YouTube channel so you'll be notified when I add new videos. Thanks for stopping by and happy crafting.